There is joy and pain when two worlds collide. It is April 2009, and a new musical is about to make its mark at the Cochrane Theatre in London. Nineteen sixty-three is about a black boy called Jacob and a white girl called Kathy falling in love. In that London, nineteen sixty-three, and the conflicts they faced due to the political and social climate of the time. Oh, I think it's excellent that I get the opportunity to portray people like my grandma and my mother. I've got an, a greater understanding of how my family must have felt back then. Theatre is a place of, of growth and inspiration, and doing something like this. It's only a moral boost for all of mankind and society. Normally when you do musicals, um, it can be a little bit quite fairy tale like and this isn't like that at all. People who have been involved in it should be really proud of actually preserving that aspect of history through a musical. As Frank Sinatra would sing, that's life and that's how it is. I think you'd have to agree. Everyone's together, you learn a lot, everyone's out to look after each other. And that means so much to be able to come to a company where you're able to be yourself. London 1963 is the setting for YPTC's new production. A city on the verge of a social and cultural revolution. Freedom, totally. There was Sweden, I think, in young people. James Bond, the Beatles, and a fashion explosion were all just beginning, and gangsters such as the Crays and the Richardsons brought the underworld into the mainstream with the dangerous glamour of celebrity and political contacts. Stanley Baker, very great pal of mine. Frank Sinatra introduced to him, shook his hand. Christine Keeler and everyone in the Perfumer Affair and that kind of seedy side in London. In the shadow of the Cold War, and with the outcome of a nuclear arms race looming across the world, London lived every day as if it was the last. That was wonderful times, Ronnie Scott's opening up and that, all the lovely music. Jazz? Arabia? The fashion was beautiful, nice, pointed shoes, tall heel. I came up in stiletto and pencil skirts. When I was 15, within the Daily Mirror, Middle page spread at the shortest mini skirt in London. Wonderful period. Wonderful. Based in Camden Town, YPTC are a uniquely diverse group of young people whose backgrounds span all races and social groups. And it is this diversity which inspired the creation of this new production. The play strips down the subject of um, segregation between blacks and whites and just reveals that everybody is the same. Everyone wants to be treated equally. Because there's so many different types of immigrants in London yeah. and that have come over, so it has to, there has to be a sort of balance between everyone and respect for everyone. We're all immigrants, whites and everyone, we are all immigrants now. 1963 is set at the height of the Caribbean immigration, which began with the Windrush in 1948. They came from St. Kitts, Barbados, Trinidad, Tobago, Jamaica. Um, the same in Jamaica where I'm from, that we, it is a mother country. And we knew no other culture but the British cultural way of life. The first-hand experiences and memories of people living in London at that time form the basis for this story of love against the odds. Well, I personally come because I have had a brother here, which is older than me, and he wanted company. My Grandma came over here and she was studying, therefore when she got back to Trinidad she was like, England's fantastic! <laughs> and um, she wanted to take my uncles and dad over there for better education. There was um, the opportunities that he wouldn't have back home. In, in Cyprus, uh, up to the age of 18, 19, he was a shepherd. There were, there was very limited things he could do. Mainly for job opportunity because um, there was more opportunity here. Money was very scarce because we worked for ourselves as small farmers. To come here and be employed for the first time it was very hard. It was a ball on the ship. It was, uh, it was, just, it was fun. It was very far. Three weeks. So I was getting away from a very strict home, a very strict upbringing. There was a sense of freedom. It was exciting to actually leave Jamaica at that age and 
to come to England with your mother and father already being here and not seeing them for some time. And we also thought I wouldn't get their bum spanked anymore. <laughs> so, <laughs> they didn't spank children in England. Oh. That's what we were told. London was quite exciting because there was a lot to see. It all looked like factories. You understand? It didn't look like homes. For a city, it wasn't too up to standard. <laughs> With family and friends far away, some found adjusting to British life hard. My dad misses the general freedom of the Caribbean. I'd say there would be a, a massive culture shock. I'm not like, just, just because it's just different. I mean, they've been living in a hot country. The Caribbean is more karma towards them um, working life. When they came over here, the money was like ridiculous. You know, they were poorer than they thought they were. Everything in my family. I miss the food. Well, the sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> you like never experienced the weather that me had to experience when me come over. Da, da, da. It's like, oh, okay. This was not eased by the hostile reaction of some London inhabitants to the newcomers. They look at you funny, but it didn't bother me. It is, they are what they are to me. In the early 60s, they didn't want to know you. They, well, not, not all of them, but it was widely spread. You are not the same. You'll see notices on the, in the windows for, 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 for tenants and as soon as they see you come to the door, they just shut the door in your face. No Irish, no blacks, no dog. It was that they were already prepared for their arrival. Um, but they were afraid, I think, of something new. I think that's the main thing that, the main lesson for people is the ignorance. Because I think if you don't understand something, then you can't ever improve it. This stuff still happens, you know, not just with white and blacks, it happens with all sorts of cultures. People are racist towards the Irish because I think they thought they were stealing jobs and such. In Turkey, the culture is everybody's white and Turkish, that's it. And I remember them telling me stories where um, people, my sisters and different people used to cry when they saw a black person because they didn't know what it was. Um, so I think it was more intercommunal conflicts that, that occurred rather than being one sort of like directly you're, you're black. And when the two worlds fell in love, Disapproval often came from both sides, although some found acceptance easier to come by. I looked at his eyes and thought, mm. <laughs> It's almost like we had a responsibility in itself, carried a responsibility in itself. And that responsibility is to say, hey, it works. And it's only when my son, as the only son that I have, get married to a white girl, and her attitude to me, along with my son, that caused me to change my mind. I would never stood up against anyone that decided to have a, a family, a mixed family. London in the early 1960s was also a boom time for organized crime, something which is reflected in the play. But to find out what the real gangs were like, YPTC went to the horse's mouth. Mad Frankie Fraser, member of the South London Richardson gang. The prestige, the money, very good, yeah. Women, yeah, yeah, thank God for that. Charlie and Eddie Richardson, who I'd never ever met then, I was in prison for what they'd done when my sister's son got beaten up by a nephew and they found out who'd done it and they beat them up. And that's how I happily went with them instead of the craze. Parkhurst um, prison. Parkhurst prison, Parkhurst right. Yes. Terrific riot. This prison officer swore blind or cut one of his ears off and they couldn't find it. True. So I put it down the toilet, flushed the chain, and it's floating somewhere off the Isle of Wight. <laughs> you don't have a right if a prison is treating everyone fairly. Yeah. You only have a right when things ain't right. Yeah. I was just told it's Big Frank, one of the biggest of all time. But as I was on the run at the time for a crime, and I had to say to them, no, thanks very much, boys, I'm red hot. And while we're going around setting it up, I could get recognised and could cause a lot of embarrassment. And I pulled out. And when I was in prison with all of them, we all had a great laugh about it. I only wound up with 20 years, then with, then with 30. 
Yes, I'll do it all again, but make sure I didn't get caught. <laughs> and he's going to come after you. And when he finds you, he'll finish you. With Rita, she's such a symbolic character of change. She's not racist, yes. but it's, she's really symbolic of a lot of the people who believed that it wasn't right, but never spoke out about it. The London have changed a lot. People begun to accept one another. And I'm so used to different cultures that I don't think anything of it. Well, I think they're more accepted now than anything. A player like this who's actually joining of the races, you understand? He's cementing their flower power again and bringing back the movement of love. And that is the future of life. And I think even though my family weren't actually from the Caribbean and not everything exactly relates to me, I think it just allows us to like give them a voice. Of course, they're actually acting and seeing and learning more about what happened in those days so that they can draw their own conclusion of what they think about it. To know what the, what, what the past was like you know, so that they can bring that forward and pass it on to the next generation. To start a, a, a positive life, to start something great for their children, grandchildren, grandchildren. I think sometimes we need reminding of what's gone before us. Especially in a time where now um, we, we have the first US black president and those um, issues that were prevalent then to be actually related to today's society and see how far we've actually come. Being like obviously a black actress, yeah, it is a big, a big responsibility for me. If we get it wrong, then I feel like we're taking the mick kind of thing out of how they would have acted then. So I feel we need to get perfect yeah. for it to work. I, I feel like I was experiencing what they experienced. Kind of challenging in our other character, he's racist. That's going to be awkward on stage. Doing it has given me a different perspective on it and the actual hard times they went through, which is what people went through. And to go to any country, you know, you would still find that. It's not always just the white people being racist to the black, but the black people being racist to the white. And it shows them that there's no need for it either way. And especially for London, in fact, it's an important part of our history, which we shouldn't forget. Uh, and I think, especially today, we, we, we forget a hell of our, of, of our history. So it's really nice to sort of show people how it was when Jamaican people first came here and how they sort of set the pathway for other people from other Caribbean islands to come, Africans to come, Asians to come. YPTC, it gives you confidence, but it also gives you courage. I love the fact that everybody just shares everything with each other. We're not embarrassed and it's a place where you express your passion. Crazy long days, <laughs> like 12 hours and trying to maintain your energy throughout the whole time. And to see them grow and to change, to improve, it's fantastic. It's wonderful. I wish if I was young, I could participate in it. <laughs>